Welcome to another Todd's Two Minute Tech Tip Tuesday. Brought to you by the National RV Training Academy. The largest hands-on RV training academy in America. Hey, before we get to the video, which I know this is the reason why you're here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That way you don't miss anything. Hit the subscribe button now. Thank you. Now, back to our Tech Tip Tuesday. Hey, I'm here with Dustin and Leslie, and we're actually gonna do a solar system install. And you may know them, by the way, as the Wayward Wags. If you don't know them, look down below. In the comments, we'll have a link to their channel. Dustin, Leslie, thank you for coming on. Hey, appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, don't talk to yeah. me, talk to the camera oh, yeah. right there. All right, <laughs> so right there. Hey, how you doing? Good, Good. thanks All for right. having us, man, appreciate yeah. it. So let's go ahead and address this, right? So you're gonna put in a system, I help pick it out, but yep. typically the questions that we get is, you know, what kind of system do I get? Mm -hmm. How much? of a system uh, do I need? Yes. Right now, typically with that, what we do is we would work something out. I would ask you roughly, you know, what are your wants? What are your needs? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think for you guys, you were really addressing the refrigerator. Yeah. Yeah. Because we still have the residential refrigerator. We don't have the 12 volt. All the new RVs going to 12 volt. Ours is still fully residential. Right. So we do need an inverter for that mm -hmm. to basically take the battery power and kick it up to what we call shore power, the 120 volts. Right. So you need an inverter for that. But I will tell you, most refrigerators, based on size, roughly will still consume the same amount of wattage. A 12 volt refrigerator, four door, you know, so many cubic foot, it's gonna still demand roughly around 500 watts per hour. Mm -hmm. And the same thing, say, with a residential style refrigerator. It all depends on how big the refrigerator is, but that's kind of a good approximate number. Okay. okay, so you know that on average, about 500 watts an hour, and it all depends. Once the food is cool and you got a lot of food in there, you're going to mm -hmm. consume less per hour. Of okay. course, if you go shopping and open up the door, you close the door, compressor kicks on, right? Now you're going yes. to consume more of that wattage. Okay. So that's our demand mm -hmm. is roughly around 500 watts. All right. okay. Now we're going to look at our supply. When we're talking about how much solar do I need? Well, we have two sources of power coming in, say on the 12 volt side. You got solar panels, mm -hmm. you got batteries. And I always say batteries get you through the night okay. and solar panels will help during the day. Okay. Okay. Now with solar panels, you only got so much room on the RV, right? Only so much roof space. I'd like to have unlimited amount of solar power because it's actually one of the cheapest ways. You know, there's that first cost to get it, but they last 25 years. Wow. So there's only so much that we can put up there. Okay. So that's what we'll do is we'll put up a certain amount. We'll figure that out. On average, on an RV roof, you can get anywhere from, you know, 2000 to 3,500 Watts. If you okay. were to totally do it, you know, as, as much as possible. Right, so that's all that you can get. Well, let's just use solar panels. If you're getting about 2,000, 3,500 watts, well then you know you can run that refrigerator for a little bit. As long as you're getting more wattage on the roof than what you're consuming, right? Okay. Your supplies okay. always gotta you know, be more than your demand. Sure. Yeah. Now with batteries, that's all it is, stored power, right? So we're gonna look at the size of the batteries. We're putting in the Big Beard batteries, mm -hmm. 280 amp hours, roughly about 3,000 watts. It's about 3,300 watts, but we'll just say, about 3,000 watts. Okay. Yeah. That's what you got. Okay. Your demand is roughly 500 watts per hour. So one battery, we'll look at that, we'll get you how many hours? Oh, man. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> six hours. Right? Yeah. If you were to consume 500 watts per hour and you got a supply of 3,000 watts. So that's really for every 1,000 watts, you get about two hours. Okay. Okay. Right? That's how we get to six. All right. Now we're putting in three of the 280 amp hour battery, okay. right? So you got six, 12, 18, mm. if everything worked perfectly. Right. Right, yes. if there was no conversion, no power factor. Mm -hmm. So we'll be safe and say, eh, yeah. what did I say? <laughs> what was it, six, 12, 18, 18 hours? We'll yeah. back that down just a bit. And if it's only if you're just using your refrigerator. Correct, there's some other things. Yeah. yeah. But the question is, can it get you through the night? Right. Okay, do you guys, um, uh, when you travel, do you go to places where you don't have to run the air conditioner at night or do you need to run the air conditioner at night? Sometimes it kind of depends on the time of year and where we're at in yeah. the country. Yeah. 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 And so that that's another demand, right? Oh. So we kind of put all that together okay. and then we have our supply and then we know what our demand is. That's why I always ask, what do you want to run? Yeah. Right. And yeah. then what do you run at night? Right. Because you okay. can do solar panels. What do you run at night? Well, we know the refrigerator is going to run at night. Right. Yeah. Do you, do you run the air conditioner at night or not? Well, right now, this time of year, we're not. Typically, right. we Typically, don't. in the summertime, we will run one AC in the bedroom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you set your temperature, and I'll even ask what temperature do you set it. I know the lower that number is, the longer that air conditioner is going to run. Exactly, yeah. So all we're doing is kind of putting together a system 
that can fit inside your RV, but get as close to your demands as possible, okay. right? what your wants are. So that way it doesn't interrupt what you're doing. So let's just take an air conditioner. Now, air conditioner is really the biggest appliance that we're really going to draw from in the right. summer. Maybe that space heater, you know, that mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. uh, call a fireplace or whatnot right. in the winter. Yes. That's what we're going to consume, right? Yep. Now, the air conditioner is connected to a 20 amp breaker. Okay. Right? So we're going to pull roughly around 2,400 watts. How did I get that? <laughs> 20 amps times 120 volts. Okay. Amps times volts equals watts. Heck. Now, my air conditioner is not always going to pull that. Right. But if I'm doing my numbers and I say I have a certain amount of supply, I want to use the largest numbers possible because no one ever goes, damn it, I got too many batteries or I got too many solar panels. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, I thought I was going to get through the night, you know, with the air conditioner on. So we always use the largest number. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you don't know, let's just go with the largest number possible. Okay. So here I have six, so I got three, six, 9,000 watts mm -hmm. total inside the batteries. Okay. And I know I'm going to pull, let's just say 2,000 for easy math. So if I have just the three batteries, how long can I run the air conditioner? Two, four, four six, six, eight. eight. Okay. So about four hours. All right. Right. So I know that I can, you know, especially in the heat of the day, if I didn't have help from the solar panels, which I will, mm -hmm. and I just ran it, that's four hours, you know, if nothing else is on. Now, typically you turn out all your lights and all right. that stuff. Yeah. Yes. You still have the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. going to draw some. Now it's, you know, how often does the air conditioner turn on? When you guys turn it on, does it run for an hour straight or does it... Do you have it? You can tell it kind of cycles. What it we call cycles. cycles. It cycles, yeah. especially because we're only running the bedroom air conditioner. So it cools down really quickly up in that little bitty space. Yeah. So it will kick on for maybe a few minutes and then it'll kick then off it for up. maybe 20 minutes. So check this out. Let's just say you're only, you know, let's say for every hour, it's only on for 30 minutes. Okay. Well, I knew I could have went four hours straight. Right. If it was on all the time. Well, if it cycles on and off, say 30 minutes every yeah. hour. So you can double that. Eight hours. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that's kind of how we just kind of quickly put this together. You can get okay. lost in the details, but we always look at the biggest uh, item that we're going to use. And then, of course, the refrigerator, which we always use. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Kind of put those together and say, this is the system. Now, the funny thing is, like with all systems, hey, that's great. Can I go 12 hours? <laughs> Let's right? push it. That's where we start <laughs> putting more and more. Yeah. In, right? So we're building a system to kind of get you started on this. We're like, you know, putting in three mm -hmm. batteries, mm -hmm. having the solar panels to help out during the day. Because you want those batteries to be there for the night. Right. Right. Do you run a, a fan next to the bed? Do you have a CPAP machine? Nope. You know. Nope. So what are some other demands you're not thinking about? During the nighttime, not a lot. But during the day, we do have we do have a unique pet. We have a bearded dragon who's a reptile who requires a heat source because they can't produce their own heat. So we have to run a heat lamp and a UV lamp for Kinda him. like some of my ex-girlfriends. <laughs> yeah. He's just so cold-hearted. Yes. <laughs> and he requires about 12 hours of heat a day. So, okay. But I'm going to call you out on this. He okay. doesn't need it at night. No. Correct. Really? Yes. Mm. As the, long as the RV stays around 70 degrees, he doesn't require fine. any other heat source. So during the day when it's naturally warmer, you still need heat. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who the hell sold you this thing? Because yeah. <laughs> that's just not how thermal dynamics work. Yeah. So he, because he's active. Because he's active during the day. Mm -hmm. So it's okay for them to go okay. below 70 at night because that's sleep time. That's, They're okay. more dormant at night. This is why, like in, in Florida, in the Keys, this is why you have falling iguanas. Exactly. Yes. That's yeah. why they're ah, the death things. I told yep. you. So if we kept it below 70 during the day in the RV... He would just sleep all day. He'd be gotcha. very lethargic. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's what it is. I'm too damn cold. <laughs> <laughs> I don't move much. Okay. So you have that. Do you know what, what the amp draw is or what the wattage is on something like that? What's the watts on his heat lamp? I'm going to say the actual less than 100. lamp itself or the bulbs? The, yeah. Let's, let's go with the bulb. I think it's 100 watts. It's 100 watt bulb. 100 watts. Okay. Right. And is that a heat bulb? It's a, yeah. It's all right. So it's going to draw roughly about 100 watts. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so 100 watts per hour. So there you got your refrigerator. That's 500. Okay. Yeah. When this is on, there's another 100. So that's 600 Six. watts. Okay. And that's kind of how we just put it together. All right. Right? You'll also know for how long. You said roughly around seven hours a day you have that on. So it could be active. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then your total consumption for the day just on the heat lamp is 700 watts. Okay. 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 Now, during the day, you have some help. That's what the solar panels are for. Right. Yeah. Okay. And we're looking at putting anywhere from 1,200 to 2,000, 
Because your rig is only, what, 30, 38. 80. Yeah, so we'll see what we can do there. Okay. Now, you're not always going to get that. The funny thing about solar panels, you know, okay. people will say this all the time. Well, I've got 4,000 watts on the roof. You only get about 4,000 watts, maybe, for about 30 minutes a day. Oh, okay. Because right? okay. you got to think about solar panels are sitting here. Here's the sun. Oh, yes. Right? Okay. So, yeah, you're not getting full sun yeah. strike till up here. Gotcha. Right? But you are getting some. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? So this is where also having a small generator will help out. Yes. Yes. Right? Do you guys have a portable generator? Yes, we do. All right. So again, if a goal is to have your batteries at night, because there's no help, you have no solar panels, and typically you can't run the generator at night. Right. Right? Because people right. don't like noise. Shh. Exactly. Quiet. So before you get into quiet hours, turn on your generator mm -hmm. and charge up the batteries. Yeah. Okay. Right? And you guys will learn this. is kind of, there's two times a day you're going to run that small generator. Okay. Before you go to bed or before quiet hours, to top off the batteries. Maybe, just maybe, in the morning, as soon as quiet hours are over, you may, you know, sun's not all the way up yet. You're not getting all the full wattage. Your yeah. batteries are at 20%. Go ahead and kick on the generator to okay. charge the batteries back up to kind okay. of get you through. But that's all that you need that generator for. Right. Right. As you kind of yeah. get used to it. Yeah. Okay. So here we are asking this. I'm here asking mm -hmm. you guys. Really, the best way for you, if you're actually looking, is to do what we call an energy audit. Okay? We have a sheet over here that you actually just download, and it just lists all the different items that you may want. Now, you have to fill it out, right? I will put in the information what voltage they typically take. You have some stuff that's 120 volts, some stuff that's 12 volts. Mm -hmm. We're still looking at, you know, what is the current draw on it, what we call amps. What's the current draw? You have to look at the data plate. But you do an audit. The audit is, what do you run that you feel comfortable with? Because one of the considerations is, the trade-off is, is, what does it cost? Yeah. yeah. Right? And if you could be comfortable at XYZ cost, then it definitely want to do it. Right? Okay. But if you put in a super small system, all it does is kind of make you upset. It's like having yeah. one chip. Yep. You know, someone gives you one chip. You're like, damn it, now I just want chips. <laughs> yeah. And it's kind of that way with the solar prep. Hey, here's a battery and here's a thousand watt inverter. You can't do anything but run that refrigerator for about an hour, hour and a half. That's not going to do me anything. Hey, no. that was great for that hour, an hour and a half. But yes, that doesn't allow me to do other things. So yeah. more, more power coming in, right? More potential power. But you want to find out where you're at. And that's how you really determine whether the system is right for you. Okay. If okay. I can do anything and take this anywhere and still live comfortably, what's my cost? Right. Okay. And then that's how you get that back. Right. Okay. You get it back because you're now you're not paying for the site. You're not paying for yeah. electricity yeah. and all of that. And you get to go places that you couldn't go before. Exactly. exactly. That's, that's what we want. So part of the plan. kind of a, a down and dirty quick on how we actually determine that. Right. But you want to find out what you need in order to RV happily. Exactly. Where can we get this? Well, over there at Big Beard Batteries, you go down there and click on Energy Audit. Give us your information and we'll send you that Energy Audit. There's your tech tip. <laughs> All right, before you get to the bloopers, which is why you're here in the first place, the RV industry needs thousands of RV technicians and inspectors, and now is the perfect time to do that. If you want to make more money or have more control over your time, go ahead and click the link below. Or if you just want to learn how to fix your own RV, got something for you there. Head over to RVTechCourse.com and get started today. Now for the reason that you're out there in the video, Roll the bloopers. What's the names again? <laughs> Dustin. Dustin. Dustin and Leslie. Leslie. All right. What's your name again? My name's Todd. Okay. <laughs> nice to meet you, Todd. <laughs> Thanks for buying my system. <laughs> yeah. Our pleasure. That works out real well. <laughs> ah, how much money you got? <laughs> That's the first question. Yeah. yeah. When yeah. you put it in your pets and you plug them into the wall, right? Yeah. I don't know what pet you plug into the wall, but. <laughs> I understand you guys have a channel. It's called The Wayward Wags. Tell us just a little bit. For those of you that may have not found them yet, what is your channel all about? Well, it's really just about our life in general and traveling around. And we focus on helping veteran organizations as we travel. So we take a portion of everything that we earn on our social media platforms. And we, as we travel, we donate it to veteran organizations to, to stay connected with the veteran community. We were very involved when we were back home in the veteran community. So we wanted to keep that up. And um, actually, to date, we've already donated over $40,000 to veterans. Nice. Yeah. Okay. But, I mean, what's the channel about? I know you're doing that, which is oh. great, right? And giving back in. That's awesome. But what, is it just a day in the life of what you guys are? Or do you get helpful tips? <laughs> <laughs> well, ours is like more like a how, how not, not to, to. Right. channel. <laughs> 
Yeah. yeah. We do, we document all of our screw ups so that you don't have to go through the same kind of stuff that we go through when we go. Or you identify, fun. okay, I'm not the only one. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Awesome. So for example, I'll give you an example. Example is one day we went to go travel and one of us forgot to flush the toilet. And when we arrived at our destination, there was a little bit of a mess. Yeah. And so when we got there, I told her, I said, get the camera. And she goes, no way, we're getting the camera. Out. That shit. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yeah. But that's one of the things that we bring right. to our audience so that they don't have those kind of issues. Yeah. Hold up. Who leaves the bathroom without flushing? This guy. It was one of us. <laughs> He's excited to go. <laughs> and with that, we're out of here. <laughs> Whatever.